Let me welcome you all to our Community Act of Remembrance here at Rowan Row. You're very welcome. Just let me share some information with you before we start. You may have noticed along the railings just behind you, there are several crosses. What we did, we got some pallets that were destined for a local bone fire. The young people donated them to us, to us and we then gave them out to community groups, made us crosses and asked each community group to decorate one. You can see there's about 17 to 20 crosses tied to the railings, decorated by various clubs. Well worth a, a look at before you leave today. We also see on your programme there's also a photography competition. Anyone who fancies themselves as David Billy, uh, please feel free to take a photo and submit it to the competition, capturing the spirit of row and row. And then you see there's also details in the programme of a longer term project looking at those buried locally who died in the service of their country. The name Row and Row comes from a line in John McRae's famous poem in Flanders Field, which is going to be read for us in a few moments. We have the strap line, East Belfast remembers. Indeed, East Belfast remembers them all. So who do we remember? Well, the event was opened on Sunday by 95-year-old Teddy Dixon, an American infantry soldier who served with American infantry during the war. He saw service in Germany and Italy. He was at the Liberation in Dachau and was awarded the Bronze Star for bravery. But he lives here in East Belfast and very much regards himself as an East Belfast man. Of course we remember the 8th Battalion Royal Irish Rifles, East Belfast Volunteers. But we also remember the Connaught Rangers. We remember the McDermott's from Belmont and the Rooney Brothers from the Short Strand. We recall the members of the Royal Flying Corps, the Royal Navy, the Merchant Navy. Those from all traditions who fought in the defence of small nations. We also remember those who, who built the ships that were used by the Navy and the Merchant Navy. Those who have been involved in the war work, whether there was nurses with the VAD, or working in the munitions factories, or manufacturing parachutes. Remember those from these shores who also serve with the Canadian, the Australian and New Zealand forces. Go to any church and look at the War Memorial and you'll see people who served with Commonwealth forces. People who were born here, who emigrated for a better life, or for a different life even, and then joined the local forces and came back to fight in Europe. We particularly remember those today from the home front during the Second World War. The number killed during the Belfast Blitz was in excess of 1,100. 56,000 homes suffered damage, 3,200 homes were totally destroyed. Plus, of course, the damage, the shipbuilding and the other industries here in Belfast. It was a terrible time in the streets around here when the Luftwaffe attacked. But local people responded, local services responded. The police were involved in recovering the injured digging out the bodies of the rubble. And of course the fire service were there trying to put out the fires and the ambulance service also picking up the pieces and picking up the injured. So it's great to have the three services here today and we pay tribute to them for all the work they do, not only then, but also today. We also incorporate in that remembrance the 70 firemen from the Republic of Ireland from Drogheda Dublin and Dock Fire Brigades who joined our services during the Blitz to fight the fires. And of course remember those who flew over our skies to protect us during the Second World War. And today I especially welcome those from the Polish community here to honour their fellow countrymen who flew with the Royal Air Force. Yes, we focus on individuals. We focus on the tragedy and person behind the statistics. You see, it's just not armed forces go to war, but a nation and a community go to war as well. Every home was involved and affected by the war and the various conflicts in some ways. And we remember the war not to glorify it, but to honour those who fought or were affected by it. And we remember, so we don't want it to happen again. We're now going to have the poem in Flanders Field read for us.
In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks so bravely singing fly. Scars her aim the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and more loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our crow with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw the torch we yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, the poppies grow in Flanders Field. Thanks very much, Kitty. Each evening we reflect on one individual, and Jody Floyd is now going to read The Life of Paris Hill Walsh. There's copies of the profile available in the tent if you want to pick one up. Paris Hill Walsh, Aurea Proportion Messenger. Address 28 Paxton Street, Belfast, age 16, died 16th of April, 1941. Ferez Hill Welsh was born in 1925 to Ferez and Agnes Welsh. The family home was the 28 Paxton Street of Tetmore Avenue. His father had served in the Great War with the Royal Irish Rifles before transferring to the Royal Engineers. He had been awarded the Military Medal for volunteering to lay communication lines in no man's land during the Battle of Somme in 1916. When the Second World War broke out and the threat of German air raids over Belfast became a reality, Perez Jr. became an air raid percussion manager. His role would have involved delivering messages by running or cycling on behalf of the ARP. In the event of phone communication being destroyed by bombing, he was attacked, attached to the ARP post 419. The first German air raid took place in Belfast on the 8th of April when eight bombers carried out attacks on the shipyard and the docks. However, it was only a taste of what was to come. On the evening of Easter Tuesday, 15th of April, 1941, the Luftwaffe returned with 180 aircraft. They dropped over 300 parachute flowers, lighting up streets as bright as day. In the following hours, they dropped 29,000 incendiary bombs, 674 high explosive bombs containing 200 tonnes of explosive and 76 parachute landmines. Agnes Walsh told her son that evening not to, go, not to be going out. However, Perez slipped out without his mother knowing. Several bombs landed in Thorndike Street, not far, not far from Perez's home. Perez Hill Welsh Jr., aged 16 years, was killed in Thorndike Street on 16th of April 1941 with 18 others. He is buried in Dundonald Cemetery and commemorated on the Belfast Civil Defences Memorial Plaque in City Hall, Belfast City Hall. Connor Irvine is now going to read the poem, The Papa. I am not a badge of honour, I am not a racist smear, I am not a fashion statement to be worn once a year. I am not a gratification of conflict or of war. I am not a paper ornament, a token I am more. I am a loving memory of a father or a son, a permanent reminder of each and every one. I am a paper enamel. I am old or shining new. I am a way of saying thank you to every one of you. I am a single poppy, a reminder to you all that courage, faith and honour will stand where heroes fall. Thanks, Connor. We're going to be led in our act of remembrance by the Reverend Dean Cruikshanks, Minister of St Brendan's Church of Ireland, and also chaplain the Hardenham Welders Football Club. <coughs> they shall grow not old, as we are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Uh -huh.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Sound tribute shall now be led on behalf of the Police Service for Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue, and Northern Ireland Ambulance Service, followed by the Police Committee, the local schools represented, and local community groups.
And we just express our thanks to all those who have joined with us today, those who have taken part, particularly our young people, and also uh, for those who have led wreaths. Can I encourage you, if you're free this evening or any night this week, to join again here at 8 o'clock as we share in that joint act of remembrance. As we draw this afternoon to a close, let's join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, today as we have remembered with thanksgiving the life of those who served and those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom, we praise you for your love and your goodness to us, and we thank you for those, yes, who have given their lives, but we also remember those who continue to carry the scars and the pains of conflict. Draw near to them and comfort them. But be with us now as we journey from this place. Enable us to hold in our, our, our minds the memories of those who have led down their lives, who have paid the price for our freedom. And we pray again that your grace, your mercy and your peace will be our blessing today and forevermore. Amen.